All right, so let's take a look at our lesson for today. So today is um, day four on Polar. This is a calculator, actually it's a calculator lesson because um, this, actually this was very similar to an AP question that we had a while ago. It's very similar. So, and this particular one was using a graphing calculator. So I'm going to go through those, that process of using our um, Inspire calculators working this problem. So our last arc length formula is right over here. Remember we've got, this is our third. I know it's so exciting, right? Our first one was for functions. We remember that was the square root of one is the integral square root of remember one plus f prime squared. Okay, good. And then we had the one for um, for basically vectors and parametrics. Remember that one also with a square root. This is our third one. This is for polar. So r squared and r is basically the formula plus dr d theta squared and the square root of that. So we will use that actually today in this problem. All right, so we've got a curve drawn in the xy plane and it's described by this equation in polar coordinates. So we've got this, r equals two sine two theta. And this is our restriction from zero to pi where r is measured in meters and theta is in radians. Um, and we should definitely be in radians. So I'm going to pull up my calculator and we're going to graph this on the calculator. So let's pull that little guy up. I'm going to add the graphing. Once you add the grapher, you're going to actually have to change the mode to polar. So you would go menu, number three, graph, entry, edit, and then see number five is polar. So you need to turn this into a polar graph. So I'm going to ignore that for right now because I want to show you the danger that we have. So um, we're just going to type in our equation 2 plus 2 sine 2 theta. Sine 2 theta. Are we okay with the, the calculator entry? Everybody okay so far? Okay, so I actually need to use the variable theta and so I know that it's down here in this little pie thing. Maybe y'all know where it is faster. I don't know. I don't know where it is faster, but that's where I get it. And then I hit enter. So um, let me see, are we in radians? So the danger here, and let's go back. Uh, I need to go back and look at my little entry. Two plus two sine two theta, okay. What is it? Two? Oh, there we go. That's the that's the two that's out. Good. So I'm like, yeah, that doesn't look quite right. Okay. There we go. So this looks really weird, right? And this is actually not the correct graph. If we graphed this, I mean, we would lose a point because it's not correct. So let's see what the problem is. Um, if we go back up here, we can see that this defaults, the theta bounds default from 0 to 2 pi. And if you recall in the prompt, it said 0 to pi. So we would have to recognize that and actually go up here and change it. We need to change that to pi and then graph it. And now that's the graph. That's what we should be um, copying on our paper, this graph. So the important things to note that we have actually points right here, like, like on this axis right here, we're at two, we're at two here and at two there. Those points are going to be important. The actual sketch itself, we're just going to do the best we can. It's just, it's just a sketch. So let's go to our document and let's sketch that. So we need like, we need to be at two and two, here, let me change. So it actually touched here, these places, and then it was like, I know, y'all, I'm not that great. So it's kind of a round looking thing right there. And then it kind of did some kind of weird little thing like that. Just a, some kind of a, you know, approximation of it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so we did part A. We sketched the graph of the curve. Now they want us to find the area bounded by the curve and the x-axis. So we learned in one of our previous lessons we have a new area formula 
It's a new one, right? A half integral r squared. Unlike we remember our function, when we were with functions, our area formula was big minus little. Remember that? So this is just different. It's a different kind of thing. So for polar, it is one half, and our bounds go from zero to pi. They gave us that. And it's r squared, so it's two plus sine theta squared. Just for time's sake, I'm not going to put this in the calculator because you could actually use x's and put this in the calculator. You're going to get the same answer. It doesn't matter. My strong recommendation is that you don't try to foil that out, that you actually leave it like that and put the parentheses here and put the squared and let the calculator do that part for you so we don't you know, accidentally make a mistake. So you should get, when you do that, 7.0685, and we're meters squared. I went to the 10 thousandths like I normally do, so you could decide yourself whether you wanted to round or truncate to the thousandths. Okay, and that would be area. We doing okay? Okay, so part C is asking for arc length. All right, so that's our new little arc length formula up there. So L, they like to use L to signify arc length integral from 0 to pi, square root of r squared, which is 2 plus sine 2 theta squared. And again, please don't foil it out. And I'm going to show you, we're going to actually make the calculator do the derivative for us. So we're going to make it do the derivative of 2 plus sine 2 theta and then square that whenever it gets it done, d theta. So I'm going to pause here for a moment and make sure you're caught up with me on the writing. I'll pull up my calculator and we will put that in. So 2 plus sine 2 theta, all squared, plus the derivative of 2 plus sine 2 theta, all squared. Okay, is everybody good? All right, so let's pull up our calculator and let's do that. So. I need to add a calculator page, so control doc gives me another page, and I need it to be the calculator. Okay. Um, I get to the integral by doing menu calculus. I know there are other ways to get there. You can get there where, however you like. We are integrating from 0 to pi, and square root of Okay, so I need to put in, so I'm going to start open a parenthesis, and I'm going to type in 2 plus 2, nope, not 2, 2 plus, what, my 2's are going crazy here, 2 plus sine 2 theta, and I'm going to use theta here, just like they are, sine 2 plus sine 2 theta, and that, all that business is squared, plus, open parenthesis. Now here's where I'm going to put my, I'm going to make it do the derivative for me. So I get there by doing menu, calculus, number one, derivative, and it's d, d theta of 2 plus sine 2 theta Okay, and all that business is going to be squared. Okay, 2 plus sine 2 theta squared, derivative of 2 plus sine, okay. And then we are integrating with respect to theta. Now, because I never know whether it's going to just rewrite it, because you know how it loves to do that, I'm just going to do control enter to get my approximation. First of all, is everybody okay so far? We good? Okay, so then control enter and it's 7.7018. This is telling me what we already know. We've talked about this before. The result obtained using approximate. Yes, they're approximating for us. This one we can't do by hand, so it's an approximation, which, yeah, we already know that. So there's my um, arc length formula. So what did that do for me? 
it actually calculated the length of this curve. You know, if like if you had a tape measure and you put it on there, the tape measure, and you, you went it, made it go all the way around there, it, that's how long this curve would be. That's what we just found. And so the length of that curve is... If it'll behave, I don't know, we'll see. Okay, now it's behaving. So it is 7.7018, and this is in meters. Okay, so that's the length of that curve. All right. So then we get to part D, and it says, find the angle theta that corresponds to the point on the curve with the x coordinate negative 1, we don't have x's anywhere. They love like throwing us a curveball like that. There's no x's anywhere. Okay, so what are we gonna have to do? Well, we have to kind of dig back into our memories. How can we relate polar with x? That's one of those formulas that we looked at on day one, right? So we've gotta just write the formula down. So x equals r cosine theta. That's a formula we would have in our memory. And now we're just gonna plug into the formula. The x coordinate's negative 1, so I'm going to replace x with a negative 1 equals r. We know that's the formula they gave us. It's 2 plus sine 2 theta, and that's the r, and then it's just cosine. Okay, so we would need to solve that. And I know some of y'all love to use the solver on your calculator. I can't really handle that. I know, I just can't. Um, I would put this, and I'm not going to pull a calculator up because this is how you would solve it even if it weren't in polar. You, I would pull up my calculator. I would not graph this in polar. I'd graph in function mode, and I would put this side in you know, F1 and this side in F2, and then I would intersect the graphs. I mean, that's how I would solve this. And for time's sake, I'm not going to go through that calculator input. If you have questions, you could certainly ask me when we start our daily work but I would just intersect the graphs and that when I do that that gives me the theta value of 2.6303 now when I say I intersect the graphs I'm going to intersect the graphs in function mode so that means I'm using X's I'm not using thetas in this mode I'm using X's I'm treating it like it were in rectangular form to get the intersection that's what I would do. Okay. All right. So what if they had said, well, find the angle theta that corresponds to the point on the curve with the y coordinate of, I don't know, the y coordinate of 1. Then what would you do? Well, you would use your y equals r sine theta and sub into it. I mean, just like we did here. Okay. How are we doing? Is everybody okay? Okay, so let's go to the next page. Um, this is just a continuation of this FRQ. Find the value of dr d theta at the instant that instant that theta is five pi over seven, and then we have to evaluate it. What does your answer tell you about r? So they're asking two different questions. What does your answer tell you about r? And what does it tell you about the curve? Okay, so again, I recommend using your calculator. You can just make your calculator find this derivative for you. We already have the um, R equals equation. So here's what you would need to show on your paper. So you'd say dr d theta at theta equals 5 pi over 7, because you would make your calculator do this for you, equals and you would get negative 0 0.44504 and this is meters per radians okay so now the derivative dr d theta is negative so let's talk about what does that tell us what is r doing well since here's, here's what we'd write out here's our explanation since dr d theta is less than 0 r is decreasing at these angles. It's decreasing at these angles. 
Okay, that's what R is doing. R is decreasing. Okay, what's the curve doing? This means, so think about this for a second. Remember when we're graphing polar, what does R have to do with? Isn't R just like the distance from the pole? Right, that's R. So if R is decreasing, the rate is decreasing, the R d theta is decreasing, this means the curve is getting closer to the origin. Curve is getting closer, I wish I could write, closer to the origin. Okay, how we doing? Uh-huh. Yes. Mm. So what we do is we dig into the words. So if they want to know about R, they're talking about um, this, this behavior as you would in function mode. You know, the function is like if it were dy dx and they asked about y, what's y doing? You would say it, y is decreasing, you know, because that's the first derivative test, right? Or, well, it's, it's increase, decrease, right? When the derivative, when f prime is, is negative, y is decreasing. That's what it's asking about this. Now when it's talking about the curve, so that's r. We would treat that like we would a function. But when it's talking about the curve, it's talking about the actual movement of it. So what's happening to it? Is it unlike a polynomial, which just is like, you know, curves or whatever, this is rotating around the polar grid, right? It's going, you know, is it getting closer to the, it's basically, is it getting closer to the pole or farther away from the pole is what it's asking you. Does that make sense? And then the last question, oh, look how exciting. Now they threw a T in here. Do we have T's anywhere? No, we do not. We have no T's. So they want us to find dx dt. And we, well, we had X's in the previous one. That's not actually in the you know prompt, but okay. They're going crazy on us here. So, whew, so we need to relate x to r, you know, polar, which we did previously, so let's just write that down. And you thought, oh, what do I need to memorize that for? Well, here we go. We use it, actually. So, okay, so we know x is that. We know what r is. This is our formula, right? This is just our little formula. We know r was, what, it was the 2 plus sine 2 theta. And then we copy down the cosine. They want us to find, oh, and they tell us d theta dt is 3, so apparently we're going to need that. They want us to find the value of dx dt when theta is pi over 6. And then, of course, we need to interpret. Hmm. Well, we need to take the derivative of x with respect to t now. That sounds fun. Okay, hmm. So we could make our calculator do this, but I want to caution you, your calculator does not know how to tag things. It doesn't know how to do that. It can't tag. Right, we would have to tag this because it's with respect to t, not with respect to theta. So let's just, let's just do the derivative just for fun. dx dt equals, we'd have to do product rule, yay. So the derivative of the first piece, derivative of 2 is 0, derivative of sine 2 theta, we have to do chain, right, would be 2 cosine 2 theta. Copy paste the second piece, plus, copy paste, oh, we got to tag it, whoopsie, go back here. We have to tag this with d theta dt, because I took the derivative of a theta with respect to t and there's no t. Now copy paste the cosine, plus, copy paste the first thing and then take the derivative of cosine which is negative sine and tag it d theta dt. So d theta dt is 3. That number is 3. Okay? That number is 3. So 
What you could do, I mean, now how we see how it's kind of working, what you could do, you could rely on the calculator. You could say, okay, so notice how three is in the first term and three is in the second term. What if we just factored out a three and made our calculator do all that stuff for us? That seems, you know, okay. So we basically do three times, so we would say dx d theta at theta equals pi over 6. Okay, what does that mean? So that means we're going to put this in our, not the x, we're going to put this in our calculator, and we're going to tell it to take the derivative with respect to theta because it doesn't know how to do t. It can't do a variable like that, but we're going to multiply by 3 of, you know, our little x formula, 2 plus sine 2 theta, all that times cosine. It drives me crazy. Okay. Um, and that is going to give us negative 1.7009, and that's meters per, I don't remember, do we remember what the time was? Did they give us, was, was it seconds? No, they didn't give us a measurement for t. Okay, we're just going to say meters per time. Okay, so what is that? Now, our last thing is, what does that mean? We just took the derivative of x. So, remember when we were doing parametrics? What movement was that referring to The if we took the derivative of the x equation? Well, it's a piece of velocity, but what? which way are we moving? Horizontally, right? This is talking about horizontal movement is what this is talking about. So this is um, ta talking about the particle's horizontal movement is getting closer to the origin. Let's remind ourselves when we're talking about movement or velocity, when the velocity is positive, are we going towards or away from something? Would the distance be increasing or decreasing if our velocity was positive? The distance would be increasing, so our velocity would be positive, right? If our velocity is negative, that means we're getting closer to whatever our reference point is. Here, our reference point is point is the pole, and our horizontal is negative. That means our horizontal movement is getting closer to the origin. You with me? Okay. And if we did dy dt, what movement would that be talking about? The vertical movement, right? We're talking about the vertical movement. That's, that's the same concept that we dealt with with vectors and parametrics. Okay?